Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. This is Conservation in the Classroom, where you get the chance to interact with one of our very own experts here at WWF. My name is Kate, I'll be your host today. Before we get started, we wanna welcome everyone to visit that pigeonhole website that you see on your screen there and enter the passcode freshwater. When you get to the site, we want you to answer the word cloud and quiz question. So for the word cloud, we want you to name one way that you have used used water so far today. So what's what's one way that you can think of so far in your day that you've used fresh water? And for the quiz question, we want to see how many of you actually know where the water in your house comes from. So if you haven't done so already, head on over to that pigeonhole site and answer those two questions. And we will take a look at everyone's answers here in a bit. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to introduce yourself in the chat section with your name and where you're from and use that chat box to place any questions that you have for our expert today. Okay. So now I'm happy to introduce our featured speaker that we have today. His name is Enrique Prunes. He is the Senior Program Officer of Agricultural and Groundwater here at WWF. Enrique is going to share a bit with us about some of the species that rely on freshwater and all of the various ways that freshwater is important. We're going to learn a little bit about why freshwater is in trouble and also what we can do to help keep freshwater habitats healthy. So Enrique, if you want to take a minute to hop on here and say hi to everyone and then when you're finished we'll take a look and see what everyone answered to the word cloud question yeah hi everyone thanks for joining i'm really happy to be here and talk about uh fresh water so hope you learn uh from from this chat and well i i, I hope after uh, this presentation you will go outside if you can and explore a little bit about the species that you can find near your home or your neighborhood and keep learning about uh, fresh water. Okay, great. Before we pass it over to Enrique to start his presentation, let's take a look and see what everyone had to say was one way that they used water so far today. So Enrique, let's take a look at what we got here. Yeah. It looks like our most popular answer was wash my hands, which is really good. Great no. thing. <laughs> everyone is encouraged to wash their hands these days, even more so than before. So uh, looks like shower, drinking, is also very popular. Glad to see you guys are all keeping up with personal hygiene during quarantine as well. So um, those are great. If you haven't answered that question, you can keep putting your answers in there. Also, don't forget to answer the quiz question. We're gonna take a look at what you guys put as answers for that in a little bit. So without further ado, Enrique, the floor is all yours. If you wanna go ahead and share your screen and get started with your presentation. Okay, so let me share my screen here. And you can see it now. Okay, so well, thanks again for joining uh, this talk. And well, as uh, Kate mentioned, my name is Enrique Pernes and I work for WWF in the Freshwater and Food team as a senior program officer for groundwater and agricultural water. So I'm based in WWF headquarters in Washington, DC. And today we're gonna to talk about fresh water, why it's important and why we have to take care of it. But first, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, how I joined WWF and my job. So let's talk about it. So, you're seeing a map of the US in the north of Mexico. So here are WWF offices in Washington, DC on the right side of the screen. And you can see that it's very green in there. It's a lot of fresh water in the east side of the US. But I am from Chihuahua in the north of Mexico, which is in there. And yes, it's Chihuahua like the duck. Uh, but I don't know what Chihuahua ducks are called like that. So Chihuahua is in a landscape that is called the Chihuahuan Desert. Uh, which is in the north of Mexico and also the south of the US in the states like Texas, New Mexico and Arizona. And you can see in the map that is a little a bit brown and it's because it's a very arid landscape. So Chihuahua looks like this. Uh, so as in every desert, 
This is the Chihuahuan Desert, a picture of the Chihuahuan Desert that you are seeing right now. So in, as in every desert, it does not rain a lot and water is limited. So for example, in Chihuahua, we don't have water running on the top all day, only for a few hours. So since I was a kid, I learned the importance of using water efficiently and not wasting it. So even though there is not much water in the Chihuahuan Desert, I grew up uh, playing in rivers, irrigation canals, and running around in the family picking tree orchards and croplands. So I was fascinating uh, about uh, water and wanted to learn more about it. So I decided to study engineering and hydrology. And hydrology is the science that studies the distribution and movement of water on Earth, like the hydrologic cycle. And maybe you have learned about that already. So I started to work in WWF around 11 years ago as a hydrologist. And you can see some pictures in here of me working at that time. And I was doing a lot of uh, conservation of freshwater ecosystems, like rivers, lakes, and spring, and the species that live in it. And also some researching uh, and looking for better, better ways to manage the water we use, and especially for agriculture. So around that, that time, I was doing a lot of hydrological monitoring in rivers, uh, springs, hot springs, and aquifers, uh, monitoring wells, and being outside and outdoors. And that was the best part, is that I was able to keep playing in the water, but now for work. So let's talk about uh, fresh water. And first, I want to talk about how water is distributed on Earth. So Earth is often called uh, the blue planet because of the vast oceans that cover most of its surface. As you can see in the picture of the planet is, is uh, a lot of oceans there. And actually ocean cover up about 70% of Earth's surface. But if we talk about the volume of fall water on Earth, 97% is in the oceans and it is saline water. That means it's water with salt and we cannot drink it or use it directly without removing the salt. And only 3% of all fresh water on Earth is, uh, of all water on Earth is fresh water. And it's uh, not all fresh water is liquid and inaccessible to us. So let me explain a, a little bit about fresh water and how it's distributed. So as I say, not all fresh water is liquid and accessible to us. Almost two thirds of fresh water are frozen in glaciers and ice caps. As you can see in the picture in the middle of a glacier. And also one third is groundwater, which is hidden underground in aquifers. And an aquifer is an underground layer where the material contains water. So imagine that underground you have material like uh, sand, gravel, clay, or silt, and that contains water, but also can be rocks. Like the picture on the right, you, you are seeing a cave with groundwater, and that is also where groundwater is. So commonly we need uh, to drill wells to extract uh, water from aquifers to use it. So if one thir one, two thirds are frozen and one third is under underground, only about 1% of all fresh water is in rivers, lakes, and swamps. And this is the most accessible source of fresh water for human uses. So that's a lot of uh, numbers. Maybe I can uh, put that in, in percentages in perspective. So I have this image here. So let us imagine we take all the water on Earth and put it all together and compare it with the Earth size. So it would look something like this. So the biggest blue sphere is all the water on Earth, including oceans and fresh water. And the medium sized sphere will be all liquid fresh water, including the heat and groundwater. And the small dot of Ob Atlanta close to Florida will be all the fresh water on rivers and lakes. So it does not look like much, right? So think of water as a thin layer of paint on Earth. So it's distributed on all the all, all Earth, but it's really thin. But it's very important. So fresh water in rivers and lakes and swamps is very important for ecosystems health and the biodiversity who depends on it. And biodiversity is the animals and plants that live in fresh water. So in fact, uh, fresh water environments are home to around one in 10 known animals from dragonflies to dogs to dolphins. So it's just, fresh water is just 1%, fresh water in rivers, lakes and swamps is just 1% of all the water 
all the fresh water, but it's very important. So let's talk a little bit about the animals that live in rivers and lakes. So for example, did you know there are seven river dolphin species? You're seeing some cool pictures right there. They're all, the dolphins always make me laugh. So these river dolphins live in, in rivers like the Amazon in the South America and other rivers in Southeast Asia like the Ganges, Yangtze and Indus. So these are big rivers. Uh, but unfortunately, all river dolphin species are endangered. And this means that, the, that they're very likely to become extinct in the near future. And I will explain uh, later what they are at risk. Also, freshwater environments are home to around half of all fish species, more than 15,000 species. But also freshwater ecosystems are home for some reptiles and amphibians like crocodiles, snakes, turtles, frogs, and salamanders. And speaking of salamanders, Several salamander species migrate from forested areas or wooded areas uh, to reproduce in temporary ponds that are created by springs, by spring rains. So let me show you a video. I captured this spring near where I live, and this is very cool. So you are watching thousands of spotted salamanders mating and laying eggs in a small pond. And, you know, it is amazing what you can find close to your neighborhood. And this was really close to the city. So I like to explore sometimes and I, can, I found some things like this. So also uh, very important for a lot of, freshwater is very important for a lot of birds, uh, especially to get their food and like fish and insects. And I really like uh, watching birds and other animals in rivers and lakes. And you can learn a lot when you observe nature. So I encourage you to go outside and observe nature. But also uh, water is vital for people. And one of the importance of freshwater ecosystems is that they provide water for us, for the water we need uh, for drinking or to produce the food we eat and to feed the animals we eat too and also for industry and businesses and the energy to produce the energy we use. So in what we use uh, uh, the water. So globally, 70% of all the fresh water we use is for agriculture, to irrigate crops, to produce food for livestock and aquaculture too. Uh, so agriculture is a main user of fresh water and this is why we need to find better ways to produce our food. And this is why I work with water and agriculture because it's the main user, one of the main users of our water. And we use the rest 10% of fresh water for drinking or domestic uses. And this is like cooking, cleaning, uh, washing your hands, brushing your teeth, uh, taking showers or watering the gardens and other urban uses. And the other 20%, we use it for industry and energy production. So on average, in the US, each person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water per day for indoor home uses, for some of the uses that I mentioned about cooking or washing your hands. So most of the water that we use in our homes is to flush the toilet, and after that, to take showers. And what... I mean, where all the water we use comes from, what are our water sources? So I mentioned that uh, uh, we have surface water like in rivers and lakes, but also groundwater. So globally, on average, 50% of that water comes from surface water, rivers, lakes, uh, and commonly we build infrastructure like dams to manage and make use of this water. So in the picture on the left, you can see a dam and some uh, canals that were built to manage the water, uh, surface water in this case of a river. But the other 50% comes from groundwater and mainly from wells we drill to extract it from aquifers. So on the picture on the right, you are seeing groundwater pumping to irrigate a crop and you, we cannot see that water. We need to, to drill wells uh, very often to do that, to extract it. So there are some threats to freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity uh, and because 
We need uh, water for drinking to produce food and energy. We are creating pressures in, a, in our fresh water. So one of these uh, threats is habitat loss and degradation. So this is why a lot of, of freshwater species are endangered. So do you remember that I mentioned dolphins, river dolphins are endangered, but not just dolphins, also other freshwater species. In fact, freshwater species population have suffered the largest decline in the last six decades. That's a lot. For example, for more food production, we need more agricultural lands and we lose forests and grasslands and that affect fresh water. So on the picture on the left, you're seeing an agricultural land. And maybe there used to be forest there or grasslands that was converted to, to agriculture. But we are also polluting our fresh water with non-treated wastewater and garbage. So you can help a lot by recycling and avoiding littering. If you want to help even more, you can pick up the trash you see in rivers. Another threat is the increase in demand for water. So because we are more and more people in the world and we need more water for food, for drinking, to produce food and energy, we are using a lot of water. And sometimes we are using more than it is available every year in rivers and aquifers. And that is why in cities like Chihuahua, we don't have water available all the time. And this is called water scarcity. Maybe you have heard that uh, term before, water scarcity. And there are a lot of towns in the world with this problem and more people are having limited access to fresh water. Also, some rivers and wetlands are getting dry. And when they get dry, that means less water for animals and animals and plants too. And animals and plants also need uh, water. Another threat is infrastructure. So you're seeing right now a picture of a dam that was built in a river. And well, you can see water retained there. So infrastructure is essential part of our lives because they provide water uh, for all the needs, our, our needs. But two thirds of the rivers of the world are obstructed by dams and that has an impact on the health of rivers. So imagine rivers like the veins of the world and dams blocking it. So that's causing problem. And because some freshwater species like fish, they cannot cross those barriers. Look at the dam, they cannot cross that. So this is the loss of connectivity in, in rivers. The species cannot move in the rivers. So. so also rivers carry sediments with them and dams affect the natural flow of sediments in rivers, often causing problems downstream. So sediment is uh, helpful downstream because it, it affords nutrients for the land. So what WWF is doing? So what we are doing uh, to protect fresh water? So yes, we are protecting fresh water ecosystems and biodiversity. For example, uh, we are protecting the last free flow in rivers, and that means rivers that are not obstructed by dams. And we are promoting uh, better water resources management in river basins and aquifers, or promoting wastewater treatment and ways to avoid pollution that goes into rivers and lakes. And we are also supporting companies to make a better use of water resources, promoting better agricultural uh, practices and food production practices, and also looking for ways to develop infrastructure with less impact on rivers. But uh, what you can do, you can help too. So there are some things you can do. And here I'm going to tell you a little bit about that and hope you commit to some of this. So first, you can be mindful of your water use. So be aware of how much water you use each day. Consider where you can use less and be mindful of not being wasteful. For example, if you are going to brush your teeth, do not leave the water running and you can take quick showers. So you can help recharge your local water uh, source. All the water uh, used in our homes comes from near rivers, lakes, or aquifers. And these sources are naturally replenished by rainfall. However, roads and buildings and other in infrastructure can obstruct the infiltration of water into the ground and into the rivers. So you can return the rain to where it belongs by collecting uh, rainwater in buckets or from your roof tube and saving it for later outside use like watering lawns or gardens. Be energy conscious. So I mentioned infrastructure uh, and I mentioned dams because sometimes we build dams to produce energy like hydroelectric energy, 
So be mindful of uh, wasting electricity on plug devices when they are not in use. Try to walk, bike, rather than use your car. And this is fun too. So you can also spread the word to family and friends. So you can talk to your parents and friends about what you have learned about fresh water and ask them to do the things on this list, this list too. And also, I think more important perhaps is to keep learning about fresh water. So if you are interested, you can keep learning of fresh water. For example, where the water you use comes from, if it is from a river or a lake or a spring, or if it's groundwater and it comes from an aquifer, and you can learn what you can do to help your local freshwater ecosystem. So if you want to learn more about freshwater and rivers, you can visit our website. We have some interesting material there, uh, interesting materials about uh, river dolphins, for example, but you can also download WWF free rivers app. So this is a free app. And if you download the app, you're going to see something like this. So with the app, you can recreate a river basin and learn more about the hydrologic cycle or the water journey through a river. You can learn more about what a free flowing river means and why it's so important to keep rivers flowing freely to protect biodiversity. Also different elements of the basin like the headwaters, floodplains, how we use water for agriculture and even wildlife. The other day I was playing with this and I found a tiger. Also, you can simulate what happens in the river when a dam is constructed like this. Okay, thank you everyone. And I hope you learned a little bit about fresh water and you might have some good questions. So let's see if I can answer them. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Enrique. We're going to get started with our question and answer session in just a minute. So just as a reminder to those of you watching, please enter your questions for Enrique in the chat so we can be sure to include them. Before we dive into that, let's remind everyone of the pigeonhole website here. Um, we have one more question on there for you guys to answer. The poll question, we want to know what action you will commit to in order to help protect freshwater species and habitats. Also, if you haven't done so already, while you're in there, go ahead and answer that other quiz question. Um, now that you've learned a little bit from Enrique about where water comes from, maybe a few of you will have a better idea of your answer there. So pigeonhole.at, passcode is freshwater. Make sure you get those, question those questions answered and we will take a look at what everyone had to say at the end here. So Enrique, are you ready for some questions? Ready. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Our first question is from Deborah, who wants to know, is the earth running out of freshwater? And if so, can we make freshwater from the ocean water so well now the earth is not running out of fresh water uh, and fresh water is not distributed uh, evenly in earth it is more uh, fresh water in the north some areas with uh, less fresh water and yes uh, we can remove the salt from from the oceans and use that water but it uses a lot of energy and we don't want to use that much energy but it, it could be an option so it's better to protect our freshwater ecosystems. Our next question is kind of tied into that first one. If you just want to expand, uh, Makeum wants to know if we could make filters for water if we needed to. Yes, uh, and actually we use that. Uh, some of uh, our freshwater comes from river and we need uh, filters uh, for that to treat it before we drink it, so yes. Okay, our next question here from Pat would like to know, can we remove an existing dam project? Yes, uh, we can remove it. And actually WWF has uh, worked on that uh, uh, a lot. And when, when dams are not uh, functioning anymore, uh, you can remove the dam and uh, keep the river flowing again. So yes, we, that can be done. It's just a bit of a process, I would imagine, to get everything taken care of and 
get the river back to being healthy again. Um, our next question comes from Katie, wants to know what's the favorite part, what's your favorite part of your job? The favorite part of my job, so I'm very passionate about uh, water in general, but I really love to be outside. And every time I, I, I can be outside and explore and learn more and, you know, work in freshwater ecosystem and with the people, yeah, I like it. That sounds nice. Um, let's see, our next question is from Inigo, wants to know what will happen if we run out of water due to high embodied materials? Wow, uh, that's a hard question. It's a good, a good question. one, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. I need to, to get back to that and think a little bit. Yeah. That's okay. Listen, they're keeping you on your toes here with these questions. Yeah. Uh, Lexi wants to know how long would it take to filter water? How long? Well, that's done uh, real fast and with the current techniques and uh, technology that we have to filter water, you, you can do that like in, in seconds for drinking. But treat uh, wastewater, that's different and, and it takes uh, more time. And it's a different process because you need to re remove uh, a lot of pollutants in the water. So, yeah. Okay, kind of similar to the question we had earlier about if we were running out of fresh water, this question from Riley is if we're kind of running out of ocean water, like is the ocean drying up? Well, now the ocean is uh, not drying up and it's actually the sea level is rising because of uh, ice melting. So yeah, no, we, we are not running out of So we don't have to worry about that anytime soon, at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dupi wants to know what type of dolphins are river dolphins? So maybe like, are they related to marine dolphins that we are all familiar with? Yeah, well, uh, dolphins are mammals and all river, dolph uh, river dolphins are also mammals. And I, I, they, they're uh, related to, to sea dolphins. But it's just that they are different because they live in, in fresh water and they live in these big rivers. So there are not many river dolphins species. So. Our next question from Noah, this is a good one. How do you know if water is safe to drink when at a stream or river or are they always filled with bacteria? I think that's a great question for all of us that enjoy being outdoors in nature. We don't want anyone <laughs> drinking contaminated water. So how do you know, Enrique? So even in the uh, cleanest and purest river or lake, there is always some uh, bacteria because of the animals and the plants that decompose there that ended up in the river. So that might not be a problem if you drink it, but better if you don't uh, drink uh, water. If you also direct from rivers or lakes because yeah, it can have uh, some bacteria. That's good advice to just avoid it if you can, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, William would like to know how can we get politicians to listen to us about fresh water? Well, that is something that we do in, in WWF and actually we have uh, people working on that and they are very interested in the, in the topic and we work uh, with politicians and to advo advocate for their interest in, on, on fresh water ecosystems and well, they are always more focused on uh, people perhaps, but we need to advocate for, for interested in protect the fresh water ecosystems and ways that we can manage uh, water for people and for nature. And I'm sure people can get involved locally as well, right? With their, with their local politicians, they can write to their, to their local. Yeah, and if, if, if if you find out uh, what is your water source and you know that it's a river or a lake, you can get involved into that and advocate uh, in your local fresh water ecosystem. Okay, great. Our next question from Bella wants to know what made you work at WWF or what, what made you want to work at WWF, I guess? Well, that's a good question and I have a good answer, I think. Uh, well, I study engineer. And, but I, I, as I mentioned, I really like uh, water and all that uh, we need to know about water. So WWF has an office in Chihuahua City, uh, where I come from, and it's the Chihuahuan Desert. So as soon as I uh, finish my studies and I graduate, 
uh, I started to look for jobs that involve uh, water and nature and engineering. And I happened to find that in WWF and I've been doing it for a while now and it's really fun. Our next question comes from Cora. She would like to know, would using renewable energy help save water? Uh, I'm not sure if it will help save water, but it will help, help to find other ways to produce energy and that uh, can avoid the construction of dams. So you can help uh, protect the rivers uh, of freshwater ecosystems if you produce renewable energy, yeah. Okay, Mrs. Moore would like to know, do you think melting icebergs will be an option if water is scarce? Well, it could be, yes, but I think the, the climate change and all the changes that are happening in our planet and it could be a problem because sometimes uh, ice caps and snow in the mountains, they maintain the hydrological, hydrologic cycle. So if that change, that is going to change uh, in rivers and lakes too. So it could be more, water, more fresh water available, but it's going to change the, the uh, hydrologic cycle. And yeah, that's not good. Elizabeth would like to know, what materials do you need to filter water? Well, you can filter water with different materials and there are some uh, advanced technology materials like uh, ultraviolet uh, light or really complex filters, but you can also filter water with sand, uh, gravel, and even with some uh, natural solutions uh, with the plants too. And, this question is a tough one. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> um, we had a guest submit a question that says, how much water should a household use? So in your opinion, what's a reasonable amount for an average household to use in one day? Well, I don't know. That varies a lot. And as I, I think I mentioned that in the U.S., on average, uh, every person use uh, each person use between 80 to 100 gallons per day. For example, in Chihuahua, which is a desert and its uh, water is scarce, uh, the the use of water is around 60 gallons per day. And I think in other parts of the world could be less. But also, it varies a lot in the U.S. and in a lot of houses, they use more, even like uh, 200 uh, gallons of water per day. So I don't know. I think that depends on where you live and how much how much water you have available, and to keep uh, a sustainable use of water in in your local water resources. So just cut where you can, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do the best you can to try to not waste much. Um, Abigail would like to know, how can we make people use less fresh water? So, well, I, I think I mentioned some of those things. Uh, like you can do things in, in, your, in your home, like uh, taking quick showers and uh, reusing uh, water from rain, uh, avoid uh, leave uh, the water running when you brush your teeth. But also we can reduce the use of water in agriculture. And it, that is very important because agriculture, as I said, is uh, one of the main users of that. So we can uh, make a more efficient use of uh, water in agriculture by, by using uh, technology. But also uh, you can change the practices you use, uh, that farmers use in agriculture uh, to reduce the, the, the water, to reduce the water they use. And so I think you can do things in your home, but also farmers can do things. And Okay, perfect. So I think that is a good place for us to stop. If you guys have other questions for Enrique that we didn't get to today, you can always email them to the Wild Classroom email address, wildclassroom at wwfus.org. Before we sign off for the day, we need to take a look at what everyone answered to those pigeonhole questions. So if you're ready, Enrique, let's take a look. Let's we see. asked if people knew where the water in their home came from. So let's see what people had to say. I, I put in there, 
hint, do not say the faucet. <laughs> um, so let's see what people said. Sewer and ocean in the sky. So it looks like a lot of you were on the right track yeah. with what we were looking for here. For those of you who still aren't sure exactly where your water comes from after this presentation, I hope you are motivated to go out there and find out, get to know your local watershed, get familiar with the species besides humans that rely on that watershed. Like Enrique said, it's important to, to help protect what's in your own neighborhood and where your water comes from here. We also asked folks what action they were going to commit to in our poll to help protect freshwater species and habitats. So let's say being mindful of their water use was the most popular answer here. That's something I think that's really easy for everyone to do at home when you're brushing your teeth. Just try to make sure you turn the water off. Um, same with washing dishes and taking shorter showers, something we can all be mindful of. A lot of people answered being energy conscious and helping to recharge their local water source as well. So those are some great answers, I think. Yes. Okay. Well, we want to give a huge thanks to all of you for watching and for those of you that submitted questions and participated in the pigeonhole surveys. I also want to give a huge thanks to Enrique for spending time with us to Thank teach you. us all a bit about freshwater and what we can do to help protect local freshwater habitats and global habitats. Like I mentioned, if you have questions still that we didn't get to time to answer, you can email them to wildclassroom at wwfus.org and we will do our best best to pass them along to Enrique and get some answers back to you. Just as a reminder, teachers and parents, if you're looking for additional educational resources, we have a dolphin toolkit available on Wild Classroom for free download. That's all about freshwater, so be sure to check that out. And that's going to do it for today. So thanks so much, Enrique. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah.